What are, were your initial thoughts about the debate tonight? Well, you know, the thing about debates like this is you never have enough time to really get any substance out there, so it has to be a sound bites, and I'm a fast talker anyway, so that makes it a little bit easier for me, unless you're on the listening end. Um, you know, I, I, I have a tremendous amount of frustration with um, the way some things are being handled in the city, um, some ethical concerns with our current council, and, um, you know, there's not a voice out there that's really challenging the current establishment. It's too much of a good old boys network, and um, you know, I I like to be the person who um, you know stirs up the fire a little bit. Um, you know, I think I think I, I I did do that tonight. I brought up some things that are not necessarily controversial, but it's ridiculous how our, our city's dealing with it. Um, you know, so I, what I thought I'd do is when I get home, I just make a short little video and elaborate on on some of the points that I felt you know that would have been nice to have a little bit more time to talk about. Tell me about the public cameras. Well, that was a question that came up about public cameras, and um, I think some other folks made more of the uh, question that really needed to be. A lot of cities have had success in high crime areas putting cameras in, and um, you know, it's it's there. Are, there's a school of thought that says it just moves the crime to elsewhere, and there's another school of thought that says it actually is effective in reducing crime. But either way, these are public areas where there's not an expectation of privacy. It's um, it's entirely legal. You don't point the cameras into somebody's house as somebody insinuated. I mean, that's kind of um, common sense. But you know, it's it's an inexpensive way to make some public areas much safer than they are right now. And um, you know, not only is it does it make it safer, but it gives you a perception of being safer, and I think that's um, something that we should be looking at. I and mean, we have serious crime issues, um, even in our downtown areas, and um, some of these public spaces. This is an inexpensive way to better protect them. Can you expand a little bit on the landslide issue, please? Well, you know, it's um, certainly seeing that you're going to see that I'm not too happy with this particular developer, and um, it's just a matter of. You know, there there is a time to work with developers, and I am I am first and foremost to say I believe we have some outstanding developers here in town. You know, I look forward to working with them because I think I can learn a lot from them. You know, but that's not to say every developer is um is worthy of the city. Um, certainly, this particular developer he knew ahead of time that um his um he had poor engineering on this this slope, but um, somehow he got the permits, and this falls to the city. And I don't know. Um, I hope that person's not still employed with the city anymore that um issued those permits, but um. Somehow he's been able to build up there, and um, you know this is the thing. This this is no one's issue to fix, but his own. I don't care if it was the engineering firm that that messed up. Um, the bottom line is this is his development. He needs to fix it. Um, and there's a time to negotiate with him. There's a time to work with him. There's a time to um, you know, do the um, take the proper steps to work with him like you would with any um, you know, reasonable person. However, 13 years after this started happening. That time has long since passed, and um, you know, Marsha brought it up again um, in the dialogue tonight that she's um, she's having meetings on this. Meetings were a good thing to have um, two or three years after this was happening, maybe, but not 13 years after. It's time for some action. He's either going to fix it or he's not going to fix it. And if he's not going to fix it, we're just going to make it so he's not um, he's not building in Rochester anymore. And you know, when he, when he's presented it that way, when he's given the hard choice, you're either going to fix it or not. He's going to make the right decision. He's going to go ahead and fix it. It's just a matter of having leadership on the council, which we don't have right now. Would you expand on some planning issues and how it affects our taxes here in Rochester? You know, that's one of the things that um, you know, some people get on there. I don't want to raise taxes. And it's such a um, simplistic view to say that. I always say anyone that comes in and says they're not going to raise your taxes, they're either a fool or a liar because um, the issue is much more complicated than that. And the reality is tax increases that we might feel in the next 10 years, they're actually a result of decisions that have been made for the past 30 years. Um, if you went back and looked at Rochester in maybe 1960 and you know figured out how many feet of concrete that we have relative to um, the amount of um, people and you compared that ratio today, what you see is every person is responsible for a lot more concrete and um, that's expensive. It's going up at 10% per year. We have health care costs for city employees going up um, double digits sometimes too. It's, it's just the reality of it. Um, how are we doing for time? We're on about four and a half minutes. Oh, so we got a little bit of time. Um, well, let's let's get, let's keep going. And last but not least, what about energy? Well, this is something that I touched on briefly, and um, not a lot of people realize we truly have a, a public utility here, which means the people have some control over what's going on. And um, right now, we are doing three things that um, incent people to waste energy, and that's really unfortunate. Um, the first thing that we do is we just have this flat rate that everyone pays, um, regardless of what time they use the um what time they use the electricity and um that's 
the reality is it's energy created um, during you know peak times, um, sun's out, four o'clock in the afternoon on a hot sunny day, air conditioners are running. Why would you run your dishwasher when that electricity is really costing the city 20 cents per kilowatt hour even though you're only paying eight or 11 or whatever it is, when at night you could run that same load of dishes at three cents a kilowatt hour. If we had real time pricing, uh, people could make the decisions. They have more control over their energy bills. We also need to get rid of all these upfront fees. We haven't just incorporated in the per kilowatt hour cost. Um, that way if you use zero electricity, your bill is zero. That seems very fair to me. Third thing we should do is get rid of the sending out all these paper statements. It's inefficient, wastes a tremendous amount of resource. Let's use email and those that don't have access to email have access to public libraries. Or if they want a paper statement, that's fine, but you know, let's um, associate the cost and have them pay that cost. You know, and, and the, the fourth thing is we need to get serious about conservation, um, just in terms of how we build our buildings, um, build them to lead standards. There, no one has ever built a building to lead standard and not seen substan substantial return on investment. It's, it's a smart policy for the um, future of the community. Um, it's very short-sighted that we're not um, that we're allowing some of the board building standards to go on. Our insulation standards um, need to be brought up. Heating and cooling standards need to be brought up. It's um, appliance standards need to be brought up. Lighting standards need to be brought up. But um, you know, it's um, it's it's a matter of um, independence. I think that's one other thing that I'm going to comment on too is the independence of um, of some board appointees. The bottom line is, is how can you possibly put people with development interests on a planning and um, zoning commission? That is so inappropriate. Um, you know, yet we see it happening again and again. And um, you know, there's a conflict of interest there. I I also point out that I specifically challenged everyone not to not to take money from developers or builders in this campaign. I said I would not. And um, the reason for that is very simple. It's not because I believe that they're necessarily corruptible, but I believe there is a reasonable perception from the public that if um, you know, c certain counselors getting money from developers and then voting along with those development interests, that's not that's not appropriate. And I think the relationship between um, developers and the city council is unique and um, requires this kind of action. Um, you'll also notice that the other else there, no one, no one followed me on taking a pledge like that. And I think when you vote or when you see their bright shiny signs or when you see see their um. Their flyers. Just, just remember where those dollars are coming from, because it's it's not free to you. There is a cost associated with some of this. Um, maybe one last comment that I'll throw in here as well is, um, you know, we talked a lot about this tree ordinance, and you know, Marsha, oh, I'm on the Q design team, and um, we're going to have something soon. Well, it's been 13 years, and this isn't particularly complicated. I could sit down with a few counselors, and we could hash out something that'd be very good. Maybe not the permanent solution, but certainly a fill-in. And you know, probably about half an hour, and we wouldn't have this huge, huge issue of the just entire swaths of the city that are just essentially treeless because that's the way the developers left them right now. Um, you know, all these other things that Marshall was saying that that's well and good if they actually got done, but you have to ask yourself if it's taken 13 years and we still don't have a tree ordinance. What about some of these things that are more complicated? When do we expect to see results? Is it um, reasonable to expect that it will be within her lifetime? And um, I would say that um, based on the tree example. You know, it's, it's not getting done. When are we going to get serious about pedestrian safety? When are we going to stop building bicycle trails half on one side of the road, half on the other side? You know, when are we going to get serious about transit ready, um, you know, developments? When are we going to have communities where you can, um, if you need a gallon of milk, you can um, actually walk down and get it as opposed to getting your car and driving five miles to get to the nearest convenience store? Um, a lot of these things are not complicated and they, they're really going to affect our quality of life and um, how Rochester is in the future. So. It's, um, you know, uh, and again, the debate format doesn't always give you the time or the back and forth necessary to get some of these issues out. But, you know, that's the great thing about the Internet. I can put this video out there and um, everyone can see my responses and um, watch the debate. If you didn't see the debate, it's going to be on um, public broadcast um, on the government channel, unless you're like me and don't get charter because you don't want to support that monopoly. In that case, you can actually go to the public library, I believe, and, and view it there. Um, it's the kind of thing that would be nice to have up on YouTube, but I'm not entirely sure that they're going to do that. Um, so I guess that's um, that's my initial thoughts on the debate, and I encourage you, if you have questions, send me an email because um, you know we're going to keep putting issues up here and keep talking about things. Um, you know that's that's why we have this site set up. So uh, thanks for watching. Good night.